In this video, I'm going to take you through how to change the display of the UCS C Genome Browser to make it look as nice as possible for your screen and to make your outputs look as nice as possible. I'm going to show you the very many ways in which you can navigate the genome using the UCSC browser. Um, so you should be able to find your way around after this short tutorial. So here I am on the main UCSC genome browser page and I'm just going to pick any genome and I'll just start with the latest human genome. Um, what I'm going to show you today is true for all uh, genomes on the genome browser. These are just generic pieces of information um, about how to change the settings of the genome browser. So firstly, uh, you need to adjust um, your internet browser window, make it full screen, um, and then decide on the level of zoom that you want. So uh, I'm on a PC, I can hold the control key and scroll my mouse, and it will zoom in and out. Um, and for the purposes of this video, uh, I think uh, 150 percent is is ideal for the view so you want to choose a setting where all of these buttons on the top and all your toolbars below all fit within the screen um, but largely fill the screen and everything still looks good and the screen doesn't and the display window doesn't look too fuzzy okay once you've got that then you might realize that either this um, so in the white box here that I'm moving my cursor around and that's filling the screen now um, that is the genome browser that is the output um, that uh, it's showing to you and that's that's the content that will change um, as you um, uh, play with the browser and, and upload more data um, this browser window may not be filling your screen or even worse it might be spilling off the screen and you may need to scroll left and right to see it all so one of the first things you can do is just go to below the content window and you've got a number of settings down the bottom here, these buttons, and click resize and let it refresh. And what will happen is the browser will um, change the width of that browser window to fit your screen. So if you're on a small laptop or a mobile device or if you've got a nice big 4K monitor like I have, um, it will adjust the size automatically. Um, and you don't need to um, know what the width of your screen is, which is really helpful. The next thing I recommend before you start is to go to this configure button. Uh, the reason is, is um, each user requires different things and have got different um, levels of screen resolution. And so it's very difficult for UCSC to choose a default setting. So they generally choose something that um, will work on the smallest screens but if you've got quite a large desktop screen um, then initially the browser really doesn't look very nice at all the text is too small it's hard to read um, it's quite cluttered with all of these different annotations like the labels of every track is written on the screen um, you've got these blue lines and things like that so while they might be helpful in some circumstances um, they largely get in the way and, and make the display quite untidy. So this is your personal preference but I recommend going to configure. Um, so I don't like the light blue vertical guidelines and uh, there are other ways to give you a vertical guideline later on so I tend to turn that off um, and I don't like seeing the, the track description above every single track basically the whole browser just gets filled with text and I want to see the actual data so I shall remove that. Um, the next thing is what is going to be the um, size of the text, the labels for each track you see on the left. And this is quite important to get right. Um, so for me, I think 14 is about right. Um, and I'm just gonna go to submit and see how that looks now. And you can already see the browser was looking much clearer and much less cluttered, even though there's quite a lot of different tracks here. Um, this text is easier to read um, and, and it just looks a lot nicer and we don't have all of these blue lines and all the text descriptions above each track. So another thing you'll notice is that this um, area on the left here is where all the track labels are 
and sometimes this is either too wide or too narrow and some tracks have got very long labels on and you may want to show them um, for your outputs later on or you may want to hide them to increase the amount of screen real estate for your data so again you can go back to configure and change the width of that area so currently it's 17 characters wide let's say I make it 30 characters wide you can see it's nice and wide now and the wide labels will all fit in um, I think I'm just going to for the purpose of this drop it to I don't know why 24 always seems to be a good starting point for me okay so now we've tidied up what this browser window looks like it's showing the same data as it did originally when we uh, first came into the browser so um, how are we going to find our way around um, well firstly um, let's start with um, entering gene coordinates so in this box on the left here it's telling you where you are in the genome right now so it's saying we're on the X chromosome um, and we can see in this uh, uh, ideogram here of the X chromosome we can see the chromosomal bands and this red line shows the, the location we're in so we're in uh, P22 uh, and this is the specific coordinate um, so let's say we knew the, the location of uh, our favorite locus so you type uh, your chromosome name in CHR16 colon and then your first coordinate and then your second coordinate so I'm just going to go to the uh, start of chromosome 16 um, because I know the alpha globin genes are here um, so there's lots of ways you can type that, that, that number in you don't have to put the colons and, and apostrophes in you can put um, tabs or spaces between them it largely the browser largely figures it out um, now if you don't know the location of your favorite gene you can go and search for it um, but um, it's very helpful if you do know uh, what the actual um, official name of your gene is so I'm going to look up p53 uh, a very um, common gene in um, uh, to study in cancer biology now if I put p53 in nothing actually happens here because it's not the official name of the gene if I uh, just click enter then it's doing a little search through its database for what it might mean by p53 and the problem is it doesn't pull up the p53 gene it pulls up um, all genes and transcripts and features that are associated with p53 of which there's very many of them so this is one limitation is you do need to know what the name of the the gene is and it is actually tp53 so i'm just going to go back to where i was so if i type in tp53 um, then you'll see something has happened and a drop down menu has appeared with all genes and transcripts annotations um, which contain uh, the search term I've put in um, so now you can see there's TP53 the gene um, and then lots of other uh, transcript variants and other uh, weird and wonderful things so we click on TP53 and you'll see that the coordinate here has now automatically changed it's not gone there yet we have to click go and then it goes there so now we're centered on uh, the main uh, annotation for, for p53 and you can see there's lots and lots of alternative transcripts so that's how to find your favorite gene you can also um, search for uh, exons and all sorts of other specific sequences and features as well and you just need to try that out so the next thing is uh, we've got a series of navigation buttons at the top here that are always there on every browser window so we can zoom in and zoom out um, and the zooming in and zooming out is centered on whatever the center of your window is so at the moment it's at the very center position of the p53 gene annotation so if we uh, zoom out 10x then the browser is still centered on the p53 gene um, but we're now 10 times further out so we can see all the genes in the in the neighborhood now um, 
we can obviously uh, zoom in multiple times. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. The next thing is we've got these um, arrows on the left or the right here, and you can see if we just hover over it, uh, hopefully you get a screen tip pops up. And if you click the triple arrows, then it's moving 95% to the left or the right. The double arrows is nearly at half a browser window to the left or the right. And one click is just 10%. So let's do the double click. Uh, and let's go to the right here, because we're going to go and try and get this promoter more towards the middle, the start of the gene. And you can see now we've got the start of the P53 gene. The, the, the promoter is going to be around here. Um, so we're just moving that around. So that's quite straightforward. And then you have another option um, through these con main controls, which is below the browser window. Um, we can shift the start and end of this browser window by a certain percentage. So let's say we want 20% um, more on the left. Type 20. Click enter, and the browser is now widened to include 20% more information. Um, so I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more and do that again, and it'll become a little bit more obvious. So if we look at this CD68 gene here, it's just creeping into the window, and we'll widen it by 20%. Click enter. I think it's uh, I think it's gone wider. Okay, user error. So um, you click the arrow to make it do it. Um, so clicking enter um, clearly does nothing. Um, so um, type how much more or less that you want and then click the arrow um, to move the window to the left or to the right, either from the left hand side or from the right hand side. OK, so I don't use that much, um, as you can tell, uh, because there are lots of other very useful ways uh, to dynamically in interact um, with the browser window without having to click any buttons. And that's through the scale bar at the top here. So you'll see the very top line scale and it's telling you, um, giving you a reference for, in this case, how much uh, 100 KB looks like. And we're looking at 335 kilobases at the moment. So let's say we wanted to, to home in on the P53 gene now. One thing we can do is holding the left mouse key is just draw over the region that we're interested in and then let go. And the default when you come in um, is it gives you different options of what you might want to do. So we could color this region, so it's got a temporary highlight on it now, but we could give it a fixed highlight. You can choose whatever color you want. Um, but in this case, we're just going to zoom in. And I'm not going to click this button where um, it just um, does whatever I do now over and over. Uh, I like to have this option each time. So we're going to zoom in, and it can you can see it's now zoomed in on these three genes that I'd highlighted. Now you may want to center the browser on a specific point. Um, so let's say we want to go to this P53 promoter and it's over here, it's on the right hand side of the window. Well what we can do is just click at that point in the scale bar. So not down here but up at the top and if we click there then it's going to zoom in 3x and center on that point where we've clicked. And you can just do that over and over and over and get closer and closer in, in this case, to um, the uh, UTR here of P53. OK, so I'm just going to um, zoom back out to see the whole gene. and. If we were annotating P53 locus with different regulatory elements and things, it's 
quite inconvenient that the p53 gene is on the minor strand of the genome and so on the browser its orientation is the opposite way around so you can see these little chevrons on each gene tell you the the, the direction of transcription um, of, of these open reading frames for, for each of these genes so you can see tp53 goes in the opposite orientation so what we can do is flip the whole browser round on itself so we click this button below the browser window which says reverse and it'll show exactly the same information as what we've just seen but in reverse so now all the labels are on the right and the genome is now going from the five prime end to the three prime end but going from uh, right to left instead of from left to right so now we can see p53 is in the um, left to right orientation as we're looking at it. So we're looking at the whole genome on the minus strand. So I think I've um, shown you all the different ways of navigating the browser. Um, so you can use these arrows and zooming in and out to um, get a, 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 a basic view. Um, you can highlight specific regions uh, to zoom in on them. And you can just click at the top um, to zoom in uh, threefold once and you can keep zooming in and in, in and once you're on an exon then it will actually show you the the open reading frame um, that you're interested in and if you go even closer then it actually shows you the base sequence so here's your ATG of P53 and so on okay so I thought uh, so I hope that was helpful and you feel confident now about navigating the browser and finding your favourite region and making this browser window look nice and clean and tidy. Thank you.